Hey there guys, Ramanich here. Hmm. That's good enough. Uh anyways, I'm here with another Minecraft tutorial, and um I think I'm gonna start calling this uh these little tutorials for the feed the beast. Breaking feed the beast. Because um there's a lot of beta stuff. Well this is monster, feed the beast monster. There's a lot of beta stuff. And um the first thing I'm starting with is the bedrock armor and the bedrock gear. The reason I think this is broken, it's my personal opinions of broken. But, um, anyways, uh, well, here's a creeper. This is on hard mode. And, yeah, about half a heart. Um, the other reason is the bedrock sword, uh, it's pretty good. 12 attack damage. There's a sword you can get in this that's, like, 20 attack damage. So it's like, oh, yeah, that's a lot. But with the bedrock sword, you can actually shatter armor. So let me get a skeleton here until we get some armor. There we go. It just shatters the armor right off of them. Can't really demonstrate it too well. Here we go. It just breaks it right off of them. So any PvP that you do with anyone, it would literally shatter their armor. And I'm taking no damage from these guys whatsoever. Now, let's uh, let's get. There's one more thing. Look at all the arrows on me. Um, spawners. The bedrock. I I like this about the bedrock pickaxe. I don't think it's too broken. But uh, you can actually pick up spawners with it. And they stay what they were. Monster spawner skeleton, but it turns from oh no, they're both oh yeah, see Minecraft, Rotary Craft. So it allows you to move spawners and do stuff with it. I think that's cool. Anyways, let's jump right in here and I will teach you guys how to make the bedrock armor and the bedrock gear. And even though this is Rotary Craft, you're not gonna start with Rotary Craft, because in order to actually oh wow, you made it to water. Anyways, in order to get the ingots, you need something other than Rotary Craft to craft their ingots. It's kind of weird. I don't know. It didn't work for me. I don't know if they're gonna, they'll probably patch it sooner or later. But what you're going to need is an induction smelter. But let's start with how you power it first. What you're going to need to start with is an aqueous accumulator. First thing you're going to want to make is a machine frame. You're going to need about two or three of these in order to get to the induction smelter. So this is how you make the machine frame. I taught you in another tutorial how to make steel ingots, so you guys already know that, or should, if you don't go back and watch. Anyways, the next thing you need is a pneumatic <laughs> servo. I don't know how to say that word. And um, you craft it like this. These are the recipes right here, and I usually have these off to the side. And then you can take, you need 10 gear. At A10 gear, there we go. Not A, you need two, I think. I'll, I'll show you the crafting recipe over here in a second. Um, it takes iron ingots and tin ingots around them like that in a crafting table, and you get that. And this is how you craft the aqueous accumulator. You need a bucket, glass, the machine frame, that thing, and the tin gears. And then you get that. I will show you how to set this up in a second. Anyways, the next thing you're going to need is the steam dynamo. This is how you would make it. You need to get a redstone transmission coil. That's how you craft it. No, go off. All right. Next thing you're gonna need is copper gears, just like the tin gears. You put the iron in the middle, copper around it like that. Next thing you need is to actually craft it. So you put the tin gears here. You need cop, or I mean copper gear. Wow. You put the copper gears here, copper up here, redstone, and then the redstone transmission. Then you get the steam dynamo. So let me get that out of here for us. Um, the next thing you're going to need is the leadstone en energy conduits. This is how you craft them here. Lead, redstone, glass. So you get six of them. And then you're going to want to make a pulverizer, which this is how you make it here. You're, this is the only new thing in that I don't need to show you how to make. Um, you need a redstone reception coil. And there you go. You can. This is how you craft it here. Piston, machine frame, flint, copper gears, and the redstone uh, reception coil. And then you get your pulverizer. <coughs> the next thing you're going to make is... Uh, actually, no. Now you need to set this up. So you take the Oculus accumulator, put it in the water like so. Let me turn it to day real quick. Next thing you're going to want to do is hold shift in order to place on top of this stuff. Because if you don't, you're just going to end up clicking it and like seeing like the water and stuff in it. So... 
once you get that on there, you're going to want to just put this somewhere. I'm just going to throw it right there. And we're going to get it powered. Bam. There, it's powered now. Well, it will be powered. Next thing you will need is coal. And the reason you make the pulverizer first is because you need to make invar ingots in order to make the induction smelter. We just put these in here. There you go. It's now getting steam. This is getting powered now. So we come over here where you're going to need iron ingots and ferrous ingots. You put them in here and it will pulverize them. So you'll get pulverized iron. Let that do that real fast. And when you put the ferrous in there, obviously you'll get pulverized ferrous metal. Yep, there it is, pulverized ferrous metal. So you get those, and what the end result is, is these powders. So what you do with these powder is you take them over to a crafting table, and I think it's for, no, 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 other way. Like that, and you get this Envar blend. So you get craft the Envar blend, you take the Envar blend, and you put it in a furnace. And you're going to need coal for that. I'm going to put my, all my coal in here. Probably not smart. So you smelt these, and it turns into da -da -da -da. Wow. Envar ingots. So once you have your Envar ingots, you can now find the recipe for the induction smelter, which looks like so. You're going to need a machine frame, two Envar ingots, copper gears, a redstone reception coil, which I already showed you how to make, and a bucket. So now we have an induction furnace. So we got to take it over here, and you just put it pretty much wherever you want. Let's get some power to it. And there you go. That's all the stuff you need for thermal expansion in order to get the bedrock gear. So this is all going to start powering up. Let's actually turn to rotary craft now. And um, I can actually show you how to start setting up to get the uh, bedrock gear. Uh, you're going to need lots of canola because canola makes lubricant for... Oh wow, rain. Okay. Anyways, um, you're going to need lots of canola because it makes lubricant for the engine you're going to need in order to crush the bedrock. You're also going to need sugar cane and a source of foliage like uh, leaves or saplings. First thing you're going to want to do is set up farms. I suggest doing this underground near bedrock because that's where all your stuff's going to be at. But uh, anyways, you're going to want to craft a rotary craft handbook first because it's going to be amazing. It, it helps you so much. It's not even funny how much it helps you. So you craft that, and the next thing you're going to want to craft is a work table. And this is the recipe for the work table here. It's stone bricks, brick slabs, redstone, and HSLA steel. Mm, let me think about that again. No, don't craft that just yet. You're going to want to craft a blast furnace. I think I have these set up in the wrong order. <laughs> Sorry about that. Anyways, for the blast furnace, this is how you craft it. Stone slabs. That's weird. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be stone bricks. Uh, let me check real fast. Yeah, stone bricks in a circle like that with redstone in the middle gets you a blast furnace. And what this does is it turns your iron ingots into uh, HSLA steel ingots. And you need these H SLA stingets for uh, stingets. Wow, <laughs> ingots for all of the rotary craft. So you're gonna need a lot of iron for this actually. Um, in order to power the blast furnace, you need to have a block of lava underneath it so it heats it up. I put the glass here. You don't need the glass. I put the glass here just so you guys could see. And that will make your ingots. So now that you have your ingots, you can make your work table here. This is how you make it. There's the ingots. Those are actually supposed to be stone brick slabs. And a crafting table on top. Now, this is actually quite annoying to actually, because throughout Rotary Craft, you're going to have to go back to the work table, back to the crafting table, back to the work table, back to the crafting table. And it actually gets kind of annoying. So, once you craft, yeah, once you get all this crafted, you're going to want to make a DC engine. 
And you're going to need quite a bit of shaft units crafted like this. This is on the crafting table also, by the way. Um, you're going to need a lot of base paneling, which is crafted like that. You're going to need a screwdriver, which I have one, and it's crafted like this. And then your DC engine, which is done in the work table, not the crafting table, which is crafted like this. Okay, so now that we have our engine, the next thing we need to craft is a a pump. And in order to craft the pump, you need to get an impeller, liquid pipes, the base paneling, and the glass pane. This is how you do the liquid pipes. Steel ingots with glass, and I'm pretty sure you do that in the work table. And then these ones you just do in the crafting table, which is like this. You get the H, you put them in like sort of like a cross right here, and you get the uh, steel gear. And in order to make the impeller, you take the steel gear and you put ingots around it like that. And you get this. So once you get your pump made like this, you just place it over a block that you can actually break because the water needs to get to it. There we go. So you place it like so. Then you take the engine. Your screwdriver, if you right click, it turns things like this. So you put the engine to where it's actually on there. And you're going to need, did I give me the, some of those? Let me see. Okay, I'm looking for levers. Here we go. Oh wow, okay, stuff's over here. So once you get your levers, it's how you power your engine. But we don't need to power it just yet. It makes an annoying noise. So that's how you power it. The next thing you're going to need to make is a fermenter made like so. Impeller, base panelings, HSLA steel ingots, and then you get your fermenter. So you can just put your fermenter, sort of like, I, I usually put mine about here. Shut up, cow. Um, and then you're going to need some liquid piping. And what you want to do is you want to feed the liquid piping from here to your fermenter. Now we have to power the fermenter, which is why we need another DC engine. So now that you have another one, which I showed you how to craft, you put it towards the back like so. And now you can turn them both on. And as you can see, uh, let me just, I can't really, oh, well, anyways, it's getting power under there, speed and torque. Now what you need to do with your fermenter is you take sugar and dirt. You need to craft these into sugar. You put sugar in the top and dirt in the bottom. And then it starts crafting yeast. And it crafts it at actually a really high rate. So it's not at all time consuming too much. So once you get enough yeast, you're going to want to take, here comes, this is where your trees come in handy, your foliage, which is like oak leaves and saplings. These are the only things that work on it so far. So you take these, and all right, let's just stop this. And you put them, you put the yeast up here and the foliage down here, which then in returns makes sludge. And what you do with your sludge is you take it out, and you put it into a furnace. I'm just going to use these real quick. And it cooks into, as soon as it's done cooking, come on, that's it, ethanol crystals. And the reason you need these ethanol crystals is because you're going to be making a gasoline engine. This is how you make the gasoline engine. The first thing you need to do is craft a ignition unit, which is done in the crafting table, I'm fairly sure. Actually, I mean, all these are done in the crafting table, except for maybe these ones. Let me check. I can show you. Nope, shaped and crafting. It's definitely crafting table. So you make the ignition unit by gold steel ingots, HSLA steel ingots, and redstone. And then you're going to make, you're going to need a gear unit, which is done like so. You need steel gears and the shaft units. Then you're going to make cylinders, like so, in the crafting table. And then finally, you put them all together with base paneling. You put the cylinders up here, gold, gear units, shaft unit, and an ignition unit, which gives you your gasoline engine. Next thing you're going to want to make is 
a grinder. Now, in order to make the grinder, the only thing new recipe you're going to need is um, the saw, which you just take the steel gear with the steel ingots, put it like that, and you get the saw. To make the grinder, you put the HSLA steel ingots, the two saws on either side, and a steel gear and base paneling. I think you need the work table for this one, yep. Yeah. Um, you're going to want to make lubricant hoses. Uh, because you're going to need them a little later to feed to your m engine that's going to be powering your bed stone, uh, bedrock grinder. And you need to make those in the work table also. Uh, let me turn it day. Alright, so the next thing you're going to want to make is uh, diamond shafts. And in order to make diamond shafts, you have to make a mount. So you take... Uh, the steel ingots like this with the base panel and I think this is in a crafting table okay and then you need to make a diamond shaft unit which is fairly easy to make sort of just like a regular shaft unit you put the three diamonds like so and you put it over a mount just like that in the crafting table and nope work table you do it like it in a work table and you get eight diamond shafts next thing you're going to want to make is bevel gears now with bevel gears you have to take the base paneling a steel gear shaft units and steel ingots and you make it in the work table and you get four bevels so once you have those just set them off to the side for now and the next thing you're going to want to make in this escapade it takes forever but it's definitely worth it is your hydrokinetic engine it takes eight of these paddle panels which is this how you craft them right here and you do it in just a crafting table and then you're going to want to craft a shaft core, also in a crafting table. And then you put them in the work table, like so, with the paddles all around and the shaft core. And you get your hydrokinetic plant. Now once you have that crafted, you're going to, you want to actually finally make the bedrock breaker. And it's made like so. Obsidian, diamonds, steel ingots, and base paneling. And it's made in the work table. So now, once you have all that stuff, you can finally set it up like this. Actually, I'll show you how to make it like this. Okay. I have some stone. So you're basically just going to place your stone and put that. Now, see, the thing is with this is you need running water to actually power this. And your water has, got, has, ha, ha, has to go up at least 64 blocks to get full power. And you're also going to need... Lubricant, which is where your canola seeds come in handy. So that's why you should have your farm ready. You should have all your canola seeds already farmed out and stuff by now. So now go back, take your gasoline engine, your grinder. You're going to need ethanol crystals, canola seeds, and lubricant pipes for right now. So let's get these all out. Okay. You don't need the liquid pipes. So what you're going to do is you're going to place your grinder about right here. And then you're going to need your engine. And you're gonna, your, your screwdriver is a must-have. Make sure this is pointing that way. Your engine needs to be pointing that way. And then you can now put your ethanol crystals in your gasoline engine, which powers your grinder. Then you can take your canola seeds and put it in your grinder. And now it is grinding your canola seeds into lubricant. And once that actually finishes, it will put lubricant into your hydrokinetic engine, which should run it. Bam, there you go. Now that baby is putting out the max torque for stuff. Uh, what happened? Oh no, my sound just went out for a second. Oh, it paused my game for me. Okay. Um, let's see. Engines are up here. There it is. Hydrokinetic converter. So, now that you have this, you need to take your bevels, your diamond shafts, and your bedrock breaker. And you're going to need a screwdriver. And probably some XS blocks. So you can actually prop this stuff up on here. So 
the first thing you're going to do is you're going to put down a bevel and these colors that shoot out you can right click so you can just in case you miss the colors um, there's an ow 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 anyways <laughs> so this side is purple and that side is black so when you right click it you pick the input which is where the power goes in would be pink I guess and the output would be black so now the bevel is putting energy in this way and coming out this way now you can use your diamond shafts Okay. <laughs> now use your diamond shafts and turn them until you actually start seeing them spin like that and now you can put another bevel which you can shift click to actually place these onto the machines and stuff so this bevel needs to be red and light blue so wait was that red that was weird well, what's the color of the beam yellow and light blue so yellow light blue now the energy is going downwards so you take your diamond shaft and go until it starts moving and then you place your bedrock breaker now that will grind away extremely slowly like it probably takes uh, alright so there's like eight sections of it and it takes like 22 seconds for each section it might even be like 16 sections I'm not sure how many sections it is but um, it's a lot and uh, one bedrock block will give you two bedrock dust and what you do with your dust is you now come back to your industrial craft stuff you take your two bedrock dust actually it takes four you take four bedrock dust and ooh, hold on I need to come over here real quick sorry I uh, should have had this stuff ready and you're going to need steel ingots, the HSLA steel ingots, not any other steel ingot. And you put it into your induction smelter. You put the ingots on this side and your bedrock dust on this side. It takes four bedrock dust in order to make one ingot. And if I'm, I think I'm correct, but they updated it to where um, you get four dust out of one block now. So for every one block, you get one ingot. And then you just basically take the ingots and you craft the sword, you craft the pickaxes just like you, uh, or no, you craft the armor just like you would in a crafting table. I think I have some bedrock. Okay, I guess I got rid of that too. Anyway, so like, um, and in order to do the bedrock sword, you're gonna need a shaft unit from rotary craft, the ones we used to, we were just made, and two bedrock ingots and a crafting table. And the same goes for the pickaxe. Let me show you here. Just like that in a crafting table. The armor doesn't need anything special. And it the armor it all comes pre enchanted with sharpness, uh this comes in with sharpness uh five and looting five, which is crazy. You get wither skulls out the wazoo with it. And all the gear comes enchanted with its own random enchants. So um, thank you for joining me on this tutorial on how to get bedrock gear and armor. Wait, armor and weapons, there we go. <laughs> and um, it was a lengthy process. Uh, good luck, and I hope this helped you. Leave a like if you liked. See you later.